Another example of Gestalt psychology is, for example, the continuity principle, uh, which can be seen quite well on the Coca-Cola logo. This is uh, actually a mathematical sketch of the last supper. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Uh, please, everyone, if you can move forward to the front rows. Uh, welcome to eWork. Most of you I already know. Uh, my name is Adam. Next to me is Nicola Frolova. And uh, this is our first experiment in guest chat this year. Uh, we haven't done this kind of format before. Uh, it should be actually more of a chat with me and Nicola and with you. And uh, today's topic is uh, the psychology of horizontal and vertical media formats in advertising, in art, in, in our world. So, um, if you can please tell us a bit more about you, Nicola. You are a PhD candidate at uh, University of Economics in Behavioral Economics. Is that true? Yes, so you basically said it. Um, I'm a psychologist and uh, I'm studying, for example, dishonest behavior and decision making, some uh, decision making biases connected to decision making in organization. So basically, I'm trying to set up the processes in organization the best possible way. So I wouldn't say that I'm a behavioral economist because it's kind of fuzzy bus term uh, these days. I would uh, maybe call myself more as an evidence-based uh, uh, management scientist. So I'm trying to find some evidence about some uh, 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 like good intervention in literature and then use them in the organization. Management scientists. Uh, so how are, you, how are you helping managers actually? So when they uh, come to see me and tell me, for example, there is a problem with absenteeism in a work, um, I can try to find a way how to help them to set up a good uh, process in the, uh, or some experiment uh, in the organization. For example, I used lottery to increase uh, like, uh, the uh, attendance of employers in organization. So, I'm trying to come up with some fun, creative way how to increase uh, the uh, flow of the you know, perceived happiness of the employers. So they are not coming to job because they want to be happy there, but because of the money. Uh, sh sure, that's <laughs> the external motivators of all of us. So I think we can recall another aspect of the works. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Nicole is also a member of Contra. Uh, we are a disruptive branding studio. Most of you already know us. Uh, we are creating marketing strategies and brands. Uh, the way we work is actually we are incorporating a lot of psychology and behavioral economy. It is mostly because uh, we think that quite a lot of communication relies on culture. But the culture is quite often regional, so we know the culture of the region of Europe, of Czech Republic, uh, quite well. But when we are creating, for example, global brand, we need to rely on psychology and behavioral economy because that's actually a layer which is mostly common uh, in whole global population. I will go through several facts and uh, inspirations about verticality and horizontality in the history and uh, in, the, in the art. The first thing actually you may already uh, recognize is that actually this is uh, scientific American research which says that 72% of millennials, which is most of us, I think every one of us here today, are not even turning their phone uh, horizontally when a horizontal video appears. So actually the video then becomes really, really small. Uh, how we got there actually, or here. Um, when you think about our form biotope and our actual local biotope, it's that 
the humans always been hunters and gatherers. Since the time we were hunters and gatherers, our uh, physical appearance hasn't changed a lot. So we still have the same eyes, we still have the same ears, we still have the same feet, legs, etc. The time was very small, however, the technology and the civilization has changed uh, much more. Uh, this is actually proven by uh, one Japanese research uh, that actually was uh, looking for how a human eye is capable uh, of blinking uh, on the horizontal and vertical axis. Uh, what they actually proved that actually we are capable of faster blinks on the horizontal axis, which actually proves that our former biotopes, the hunters and gatherers, the plains we were living on, most of the things we were interested in were on the horizon. So uh, either it was a prey or it was uh, an enemy or some danger. It was mostly uh, perceived on horizontal line. So that's actually why our eyes has developed faster blinks and faster, uh, faster recognition on the horizontal axis. Um, you can see it also in the art uh, and now we have, uh, th th there we have several changes. This is old Egyptian art, which actually used horizontal lines not only to tell a tale uh, from the left to the right or from the right to the left, but also to create some kind of hierarchy. So you have seen, uh, actually, you cannot look on it as a uh, uh, thing, uh, the, the, the line in, in the distance is not in distance, it's a low hierarchy tail in this, in this, in this picture. Uh, so then we move to Greek art, which actually uses the same horizontal format and also uh, is using some linear uh, thinking in the, in the, in the narrative. Uh, and then we come to the Middle Ages, where you already, this is uh, Middle Ages, uh, partly Renaissance painting, which you can see already is using a bit of the perspective. And when we get to the real horizontal thing is when the perspective is applied in Renaissance. This is uh, actually a mathematical uh, sketch of the Last Supper. Uh, when I change it, you will see it. Actually, there is a so called the, the thing you see in the middle, the point in the middle is called vanishing point. Uh, that's actually in most of the Renaissance painting, you, you have some, uh, some person in that in the place because actually most of the painters were discussing that they cannot paint the vanishing point because it would be then another point and another point and another point. Um, so you can see the, the most important thing in the Renaissance painting is the horizon uh, from which everything is, is painted out. Then uh, we have uh, the new age of, of Baroque and Classicism and the formats are changing. Uh, it's partly because art uh, is becoming descriptive uh, and it's mostly descripting the status of, of the commissioner of the art. So here you can see uh, a description of plenty of someone who wanted to show how rich he is. And there is also a first recognition of faces. Uh, this is where uh, iPhone got their portrait mode. This is the huge recognition of portraits when actually Europe and the rest of the world uh, was ruled by important faces. Let's say it like this. Uh, then we have uh, the countryside painters when we get back uh, to the horizontal format but it's actually not that, uh, that uh, obvious because this is, for example, a Chinese school of a landscape uh, painting and they were all doing it on vertical axis, 
there are some rules about where should be each uh, part of the year. This painting actually describes several part, uh, several seasons of the year. Uh, when you get to the modern age, uh, this is how uh, the TV image has developed. Uh, we have started in the 70s and 80s with 4 to 3. Uh, you may remember the PAL or uh, PAL, uh, P -A -L, uh, version of, of TV. Then for the last several decades it was 16 to 9 and now we are using mostly 21 to 9. So we are getting wider and wider, we are getting horizontal and horizontal. So what happened actually in the last 10 years? Uh, Facebook got horizontal, uh, but then started, the things that have started changing. Uh, first was with the Instagram and uh, their stories. And you can see they're already using a square uh, format, but mostly some vertical formats. Uh, which, as you may see, are actually not very capable of describing uh, the horizon. Uh, this is Pinterest format. So you can see they're getting even more vertical. And uh, this is Snapchat format. And finally, TikTok which is the only place how I know TikTok. Uh, <laughs> um, so what, what actually happened there? Uh, when we look on the facts, we actually can conclude, well, we can draw two conclusions. First, the horizontal visualization supports the localization of information and its understanding. So if you want someone to understand your advertisement, uh, you need them to follow a horizontal stream of information. However, the vertical visualization gains more attention. And as you probably know as marketers, uh, the first rule of each advertisement is attention. So, these are actually two rules you should take out uh, to your practice. Uh, but let's see uh, how it works out uh, also in other psychology researches. Uh, there are experiments of crowding effect, uh, which actually you may imagine as uh, groups of, uh, for example, green dots with one blue dot. And if you put these green dots and blue dot on the horizontal line, you will uh, faster find the blue dot than when you put them on the vertical line. These experiments actually proved... I was trying to find pictures of this experiment, but they were too scientific, really. They were... Uh, well, we, we, we can draw it then, okay? Um, another thing is, yeah, this is actually uh, funny. Uh, this is the same of the orientation of uh, vertical and horizontal. So, can you tell me which line is longer? Of course, it's a tricky question. <laughs> so, who thinks the horizontal one? Who thinks the vertical? One, two, three, four. They are same. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Yeah, you, you may expect that. What we will be discussing with you and what we want to show you is that we actually draw two conclusions for the advertisement, but there are still uh, important um, topics how to perceive these, these conclusions. Uh, so this is this is a vertical horizontal illusion which you have to think of uh, when you are drawing your uh, your advertisement. Uh, very important thing about which I will ask Nicola more is a Gestalt psychology, and let me show you what Gestalt Gestalt psychology is. Uh, I think you've already seen this in some of our uh, posts. So this is called Kanish triangle and. Uh, try to count how many triangles you can you can see. So who says five, six, eight, nine, ten, 
we think eight. Okay, there are actually no triangles, as you can see. There are no triangles, and this is how Gestalt psychology works. So, uh, correct me, Nicola, if I'm wrong. Uh, I think maybe it's more an uh, example of how our perception is working. Because, uh, you know, now when we are saying on this example, it's easier to assess that uh, we are able to figure out that, of course, there is no triangle, it's just caused uh, by the unfinished uh, circles. But in the real environment, we have no chance to see that. Uh, we're just going through the uh, designed path in a city by traffic, but we don't think about it, like, uh, like in this example. So I think it might be more work like this because uh, Geshta says the, the whole scene, the whole area is much more than the element itself. That means we more focus on the whole, uh, on the whole space. It's also, as I believe Gestalt psychology says, that we are keen to fill in uh, the gaps uh, we see there and create uh, objects uh, where we expect them. And it's uh, affected by our um, motivation, or by our culture, of our expectations. Uh, it's not, uh, we don't perceive what reality is, but according to Gestalt scientists, we perceive as we are, what we are expecting. And this is kind of interesting, I think. And I think designers in marketing can kind of play with that. Most designers uh, know it by heart, but they don't know how, how this works. So it's interesting if you showed it to your designer, so he actually knows how, how to work it around. Uh, another example of Gestalt psychology is, for example, the continuity principle, uh, which can be seen quite well on the Coca-Cola logo. Actually, the continuity says that we are keen and we are kind of programmed to follow the line. So, so the, the, the line actually, and this, this logo is really genius in this, follows, uh, the continuity follows the beginning of the C to the line of the other C and through the line of the other C to the L. So actually, this is the continuity, yeah? Yes. Uh, once our eyes starting to follow something, then it uh, beginning uh, after it met something else what we need to like follow. So like we are kind of addicted to it to continue in the reading. We all know it when we for example, uh, watching Netflix, we can stop even though we, we know like we should stop, but we just are kind of catched by this continuity principle. So then we end up with watching uh, all series of, I don't know, Stranger Things or something. Sorry, that's kind of... Uh, You're a Stranger <laughs> Things person, okay. Um, another one is, for example, proximity principle, if you want to talk us through. Yes, it's, uh, you can see actually the principle kind of easily by yourself. Uh, you, you wouldn't ever think about it as the uh, lines, uh, but you can see the whole object. Yeah. Well, the thing is that you are actually, even though there are no letters, uh, you see them as letters because here is IBM written in uh, in Jewish in was called the Jewish writing, I forgot. Okay, um, but you still can see uh, some letters, even if you don't understand them, probably. So the proximity principle actually shows that uh, you are creating the, the objects where they are done, because what in real is here, there are just a uh, number of lines aligned together in three columns. There are no letters per se. And what is also interesting, doesn't it bother you a little bit? <laughs> yes, and what do you think it bothers you, like on that? Maybe, um, I don't know, but yeah. It bothers me that it's not finished. Yes. I will just be like... Yes. It's and not finished. Yes, and that's, that's basically it, because uh, one really a good scientist, uh, Zie Garnik, Gestalt psychologist, she came up uh, with an idea that people remember things which are unfinished. So she mentioned that when uh, she talked about w with some waitresses and they were able to memorize uh, the, the wishes of the customers which weren't finished yet. So that's basically the principle which is also 
used in this particular uh, IBM uh, brand yeah, because it's so unfinished. So we have the temptation to actually draw around and to make the full compact object. So therefore we finish it. What I tried to ask Nicola first uh, is if we have gone fully into the portrait mode because what you can see that we are moving very fast into the world vertical uh, world where most of the medias are switching to the vertical point and I think and it's my theory and I want to, Nicola to either, either disagree or agree um, that actually this uh, vertical formats are on one hand driven by uh, the shape of the technology, which is smartphone, but on the other hand, they are driven by the switch of thinking from uh, we as a community to me as, as a single person, as an individuality. What do you think, Nicola? Can we see more individual thinking in the society now? It's a tricky question. Um, I don't know, which is no one wants to hear there it. There was for the scientists. Yes, no one wants to hear it, but I think uh, we can measure it. We have uh, people's readers, you know, and we can uh, measure what uh, our people want to see. And uh, but I think it's a pity to uh, go fully into a portrait mode because with our creativity we kind of kill our creativity when we see everything and this uh, unfinished business uh, and uh, it's much better with our creativity but we can think about it more so i think it would be better i don't know if i answered your question but so do you think that when we see a horizon on on a picture for example it works like the proximity principle like we we, we are thinking about what's beyond the horizon uh, yes, I think that it's much better yeah, to think about it. Okay, so when we are perceiving portraits like this, uh, we actually cannot think about the surroundings, so we get the one message and it's ended. So we... uh, yes, I think we are capable more of that. I okay. don't know if we understand each other. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Well, actually everything is switching to the portrait mode, so I'm more we're thinking about if it's really a human need or, or society need, to just portray yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and, and when the, when the portrait is myself, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but when it's someone else I don't take care about, then maybe not. Yes. So so I think actually what was the year of the selfies when, when they kicked off, I don't know, two thousand nine or two thousand ten. Actually selfies are the ultimate vertical format. And my expectations are that uh, quite a lot of content which is now created is using the portrait mode, even though it's not portraying anything, but it's more focused on, on some objects which is a portrait or people. But it's, uh, I, I have the feeling, and I don't want to speak about feelings only because that's why I have the scientists here. Um, that uh, most of the content creators are focusing only on single objects or single persons or single influences, whatever, but they are not focusing on broader context, which actually may be uh, the impact of the attention economy we spoke about last time, uh, because there is so much of content, so there is so wide rate, range of content and you are getting less and less attention for your content, so you need to raise the attention and therefore you need the vertical format because that's actually what raises the attention. When we go back to the plains and savannas where we were uh, the hunters and the gatherers, most of the orientation points were vertical because we were able to easily spot them. So that actually draws us attention. So is it, do you think, either the focus on vertical format because of the attention and we are losing the attention because there is so, so much of content? Or is it more because of the selfishness? 
I think it's more about focused uh, uh, attention because when we have uh, just this screen, we are okay only with that, but it's, it's kind of uh, killing our creativity and of course we desire to be more in reality. So I don't know whatever is it is the answer to your question because uh, I think again we should um, experiment it and we should like to get some data about it and that's the only way how to find out. When we uh, see your uh, portrait, it actually is not the portrait, portrait mode. Where is it? You actually sent me uh, a horizontal picture. I had to cut it into the square. So are you experimenting with it? Uh, I don't know, but uh, how, how, how can you assess whatever it is horizontal or vertical picture? Only because of the faces on it? No, because but, but the first picture you sent me it was horizontal. So I believe you want it to be portrayed uh, in, in a horizontal format. You are a better psychologist than I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. Um, who here uh, is, has its profile picture in, in a horizontal mode? No one. Why? Well, for example, if you look at the social media, they usually do the state behind it, right? So you have a square, and then you know that the corners will be closed. So you know you always have to center it. So it makes sense to do square, but it's easy to do the Yeah, the OK. So you will, you will never, in the like, public way, you will rarely use a horizontal photo of yourself. Because now it's more they get cover photos, and more people can use cover photos as themselves. Exactly like that. What I think is actually the square is only uh, a first step to the vertical format we've seen on Instagram and Pinterest. So, who here has some kind of promotional video to their product? Do you have? And is it horizontal or vertical? It's vertical. Nice job. So you should follow her, okay? Everything is going to be vertical. Um, I think, um, do you want to add something, Nicola? Yeah, okay. I think we, we've done uh, our presentation. If you have any questions, please ask. Uh, we are here for you. Uh, this was a quick introduction to the vertical and horizontal formats. It will be also online as a podcast and video. So feel free to watch it and share it. And Thanks for your attention, I think. Thank you. Thank you.